Welcome to a journey through mysterious vanishing acts in the heart of nature's embrace. In this video, we delve into the perplexing tales of individuals who ventured into the wilderness of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, only to vanish without a trace. From puzzling clues to inexplicable circumstances, these stories will leave you questioning the very fabric of reality. Join us as we uncover the mysterious and chilling accounts of the five most bizarre disappearances in the Smokies. In the heart of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park lies a place of serene beauty and ancient mystery, Cades Cove. This picturesque valley, surrounded by towering peaks and dense forests, has long been a haven for adventurers and nature enthusiasts alike. Among its visitors are the Martin family, whose ties to the land run deep, echoing the footsteps of generations past. Cades Cove, with its lush meadows and winding trails, offers a sanctuary from the hustle and bustle of modern life. It is a place where time seems to stand still and the natural world reigns supreme. For the Martin family, it is a place of tradition and heritage, a place where the bonds of family are forged amidst the splendor of the wilderness. On a warm summer's day, June 14, 1969, the Martins set out on a journey into the heart of the mountains. Led by patriarch Clyde Martin, they embarked on a trek along the Anthony Creek Trail, a path well worn by generations of travelers before them. With them were Clyde's son William and grandsons Doug and Dennis, as well as family friend Carter Martin, Ph.D., and his two sons. As they made their way through the forest, the Martins reveled in the beauty of their surroundings. The air was alive with the chirping of birds and the rustling of leaves, while the scent of pine and wildflowers filled their nostrils. It was a day like any other, a day filled with laughter, camaraderie, and the promise of adventure. The trail wound its way ever upward, leading the Martins deeper into the embrace of the mountains. Along the way, they passed by rushing streams and towering trees, their branches reaching skyward like fingers seeking the heavens. It was a scene of breathtaking beauty, a testament to the power and majesty of nature. But amidst the beauty of their surroundings, a sense of unease began to settle over the Martins like a dark cloud on the horizon. For young Dennis Martin, the youngest member of the group, something felt amiss, a feeling of foreboding that he couldn't quite shake. Despite his misgivings, Dennis pressed on, eager to prove himself to his older brother and cousins. With each step he took, the sense of unease grew stronger, until it felt as though a weight was pressing down upon his chest, suffocating him with its intensity. As the day wore on and the sun began its descent towards the horizon, the Martins found themselves ensconced in the meadow of Spence Field, a small patch of grass nestled amidst the towering peaks. Here they paused to rest, the weariness of the journey weighing heavy upon their shoulders. In the midst of their reprieve, Dennis, unable to contain his youthful exuberance, dashed off into the forest, his laughter echoing through the trees like the tinkling of bells on a summer breeze. Little did he know, it would be the last time his family would ever see him alive. As the hours passed and evening descended upon the mountains, a sense of dread settled over the Martins like a shroud. Dennis had yet to return, and as the minutes turned into hours, their fear grew with each passing moment. William Martin, his heart heavy with foreboding, called out into the gathering darkness, his voice echoing through the silent forest. But there was no answer, no sign of the boy who had vanished without a trace. In the days that followed, the mountains echoed with the cries of the search parties, their voices lost amidst the vast expanse of wilderness that stretched out before them. Despite their best efforts, Dennis Martin remained elusive, his fate shrouded in mystery. In the years since that fateful day, countless theories have emerged, each more chilling than the last. Some believe that Dennis fell victim to the treacherous terrain, lost amidst the labyrinthine maze of mountains and valleys. Others whisper of darker forces at play, a shadowy figure lurking in the depths of the forest, waiting to snatch away unsuspecting prey. Years passed, but the memory of Dennis Martin never faded from the minds of those who knew him. Clyde and his family continued to visit Cades Cove, though the specter of that fateful day hung heavy over their heads like a storm cloud on the horizon. For William Martin, the loss of his youngest son was a wound that never fully healed. He often found himself wandering the trails of the Great Smoky Mountains, searching for some trace of the boy he had lost. But no matter how far he roamed or how hard he searched, 
Dennis remained forever out of reach, a ghostly presence haunting the depths of his soul. But despite their best efforts, the mystery of Dennis Martin's fate remained unsolved. And as the years turned into decades, the memory of the boy who vanished without a trace faded from the collective consciousness, lost amidst the ever-shifting sands of time. But for those who knew him, Dennis Martin would never be forgotten. His memory lived on in the hearts and minds of those who loved him, a beacon of light shining through the darkness, a reminder of the fragility of life and the fleeting nature of existence. In the lush embrace of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, a group of eager high school students from Bearden High School embarked on an adventure on a crisp Friday morning in October 1976. Among them was Teresa Trenny Lynn Gibson, a spirited 16-year-old with an infectious enthusiasm for nature and a passion for landscape architecture. The day began with a sense of anticipation as the students boarded the school bus bound for Klingman's Dome, the highest peak in the Smokies. Trenny, with her long brown hair and sparkling green eyes, was filled with excitement at the prospect of exploring the majestic wilderness with her classmates. Little did she know that this excursion would mark the beginning of a mystery that would endure for decades. As the bus wound its way through the scenic mountain roads, Trenny couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder at the beauty that surrounded her. The towering trees, the gentle murmur of streams, and the distant call of birds all seemed to beckon her deeper into the heart of the wilderness. Arriving at Klingman's Dome, the students disembarked and gathered around their teacher, Mr. Wayne Dunlap, who outlined their hiking route for the day. Their destination, Andrews Bald, a picturesque meadow nestled amidst the rugged terrain of the Smokies. Trenny listened intently, her imagination already racing ahead to the wonders that awaited them. The hike began in earnest with Trenny and her friend Robert Simpson eagerly leading the way. The trail meandered through dense forests and across babbling brooks, each step bringing them closer to their destination. Along the way, they laughed and joked, sharing stories and snacks as they immersed themselves in the beauty of their surroundings. As they neared Andrews Bald, the landscape opened up before them, revealing sweeping vistas of rolling hills and verdant valleys. Trenny's heart swelled with joy at the sight, her love for nature blossoming with each passing moment. She couldn't imagine a more perfect day. But then, as they reached Andrew's bald and settled down for lunch, a strange feeling began to creep over Trenny. A sense of unease washed over her, like a shadow passing over the sun. She tried to shake it off, attributing it to the unfamiliarity of being in such a remote wilderness. As the afternoon wore on, Trenny found herself growing restless, her earlier excitement giving way to a growing sense of dread. She glanced around nervously, feeling as though she were being watched by unseen eyes. Robert, sensing her discomfort, offered her his jacket in a gesture of kindness, but even its warmth couldn't chase away the chill that had settled over her soul. When it was time to begin the hike back to the bus, Trenny hesitated, her gaze lingering on the horizon as though searching for something she couldn't name. Robert, sensing her reluctance, urged her to stay with him a while longer, but Trenny insisted on pressing ahead alone, her steps quickening as though driven by some unseen force. And then, in the blink of an eye, she was gone. The students searched frantically for any sign of their missing classmate, calling out her name as they combed the area for clues. But Trenny had vanished without a trace, leaving behind only a lingering sense of bewilderment and fear. As night fell and the search continued, Trenny's family waited anxiously for news, their hearts heavy with worry. Hope Gibson, Trenny's mother, clung to the faint hope that her daughter would soon be found safe and sound, but deep down she feared the worst. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months, but still there was no sign of Trenny. The once vibrant teenager had become a ghostly presence, haunting the memories of those who had known her and fueling rumors and speculation that echoed through the mountains like whispers on the wind. Decades passed, and still, the mystery of Trenny Lynn Gibson's disappearance remained unsolved. Derek Luking, a young man of 24, was known for his steadfast reliability. Yet on a fateful morning in March 2012, Derek's dependable nature was overshadowed by the shadow of uncertainty that descended upon him. It began like any other day, but as the morning wore on and the hours stretched into eternity, Derek's absence became a cause for concern. Calls to his cell phone went unanswered, 
His usual punctuality was replaced by an ominous silence. For Derek's roommate Ryan Molden, the day began with the shrill sound of an alarm echoing through the empty halls of their shared home. Yet as the minutes turned to hours and Derek failed to appear, a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of Ryan's consciousness. He was always on time, Ryan would later recall, his voice tinged with a note of bewilderment. So when he didn't show up for work, I knew something wasn't right. As the hours stretched into eternity, Ryan's concern turned to alarm, prompting him to reach out to Derek's family. The Lukings, a tight-knit family from Virginia, wasted no time in springing into action, embarking on a journey into the unknown in search of their missing son. Their quest led them to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, where Derek had made a reservation at a remote hotel, nestled amidst the towering peaks and verdant valleys. It was here, amidst the beauty of the wilderness, that the first clue to Derek's mysterious disappearance would be uncovered. Surveillance footage from the hotel revealed Derek's arrival, showing his demeanor as calm and collected as he checked into his room. Yet upon closer inspection, the scene that greeted his family would send shivers down their spines. A Bible lay open upon the bed, its pages fluttering in the breeze, while a half-empty bottle of liquor lay discarded upon the floor. The sight sent a chill down Tim Luking's spine, his mind reeling with questions that had no answers. What had driven his son to seek solace in the depths of the wilderness? And what secrets lay hidden beneath the surface of this seemingly tranquil landscape? As the days turned into weeks and the search for Derek intensified, new clues emerged, each one more baffling than the last. His car, abandoned at a remote overlook known as Newfound Gap, held within its confines a trove of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Pages torn from a military survival manual hinted at Derek's intentions, while newly purchased gear lay untouched, a silent testament to the enigma of his disappearance. And then there was the note, a cryptic message scrawled upon a scrap of paper, its words a chilling reminder of the unknown that lurked just beyond the edge of the forest. Don't come find me, the note read, its meaning shrouded in ambiguity. Was it a plea for solitude, a desperate cry for help, or something far more sinister? As the days grew by, the mystery of Derek's disappearance only deepened, leaving his loved ones grappling with unanswered questions and haunting visions of what might have been. In the heart of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, where the trees reach for the sky and the streams sing their ancient songs, there lived a woman named Thelma Pauline Melton. But to her friends and those who knew her well, she was simply Polly, a name that seemed to dance on the breeze, a name that carried with it the echoes of laughter and joy. Polly was no stranger to the mountains. For over two decades, she had called these majestic peaks her home away from home, her sanctuary amidst the chaos of the world. Each year when the leaves turned to gold and the air grew crisp with the promise of autumn, Polly would pack her bags and make the journey to the Deep Creek Campground, nestled at the base of the North Carolina side of the park. There, amidst the rustling leaves and the gentle murmur of the creek, Polly would find solace, a respite from the cares of the world, a chance to reconnect with the wilderness that stirred her soul. It was a ritual she cherished, a tradition passed down through the years like a treasured heirloom but Polly was not alone in her love for the mountains. Accompanying her on her annual pilgrimage were her friends, Red and Trula, two kindred spirits bound together by a love for adventure and a thirst for discovery. Together, the trio would set out to explore the trails that crisscrossed the landscape, their laughter ringing out like the call of the wild. On that fateful Friday in September 1981, as the sun dipped low on the horizon and the shadows grew long, Polly and her friends embarked on their latest adventure, a hike along the Deep Creek Trail, a path well-trodden yet filled with the promise of new discoveries. As they walked, the air was alive with the scent of pine and the chatter of wildlife. The forest was alive with the hum of life. Polly's heart beat with excitement, her steps quickening with each passing moment as she drank in the beauty of her surroundings. For her, the mountains were more than just a place. They were a part of her, woven into the very fabric of her being. And so, with each step, Polly felt herself drawn deeper into the heart of the wilderness, her spirit soaring on the wings of freedom. She moved with a grace born of familiarity, her feet finding purchase on the rocky trail as if guided by some unseen hand. As they walked, Polly's companions marveled at her ease, 
her laughter ringing out like the call of a bird in flight. For Red and Trula, who had known Polly for many years, her joy was a sight to behold, a reminder of the magic that lay waiting in the embrace of the mountains. But amidst the laughter and the camaraderie, there lurked a shadow, a sense of unease that whispered through the trees like a ghost in the night. It was a feeling that Polly could not shake, a sense that something lurked just beyond the edge of her vision, waiting to pounce. Yet still she pressed on, her curiosity outweighing her fear, her spirit undaunted by the mysteries that lay ahead. For Polly, the mountains held no secrets too dark, no challenges too great. She moved with a confidence born of years spent wandering the trails, her footsteps echoing through the silent woods like a promise of things to come. And then, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the shadows lengthened, Polly quickened her pace, her heart pounding in her chest like the beat of a drum. She felt a pull, a tug at the edges of her consciousness that urged her onward toward some unknown destination. With each step, she felt the weight of the world fall away, her senses sharpening as if honed by some unseen force. She moved with purpose, her feet carrying her forward with a determination that bordered on desperation. And then, as suddenly as a bolt of lightning rends the sky, Polly vanished from sight, disappearing over a rise in the trail like a wisp of smoke carried away by the wind. Red and Trula called out to her, their voices swallowed by the vast expanse of the forest. But there was no answer, only the hollow echo of their own fear. In the hours that followed, panic gripped the hearts of Polly's companions, spreading like wildfire through the close-knit community that called these mountains home. Park rangers and volunteers alike scoured the wilderness in search of their missing friend, their footsteps echoing through the silent woods like a desperate plea for answers. But Polly remained elusive, her whereabouts shrouded in mystery, her fate a riddle yet unsolved. In the days that followed, whispers of speculation drifted through the air like the scent of rain on the wind. Was Polly kidnapped, whisked away by unseen hands into the depths of the unknown? Did she succumb to the perils of the wilderness, lost amidst the labyrinth of trees and shadows? Or as some whispered in hushed tones, did she orchestrate her own disappearance? A vanishing act fueled by a longing for freedom, a desire to escape the burdens of her past? Months turned into years, the seasons shifting like the sands of time. But still, Polly's fate remained a mystery, a puzzle with no solution, a story with no end. Yet amidst the uncertainty, one thing remained clear. Polly's spirit lingered on, a whisper in the wind, a shadow in the trees, a reminder of the mysteries that lurk within the heart of the wilderness. In the rolling hills of Cary, North Carolina, Christopher Lee Cessna lived a quiet life, his days measured by the gentle rhythm of small-town living. At 45 years old, he was a man of routine. His mornings were spent sipping coffee on his porch, watching the world awaken with the sun's golden embrace. Christopher's love for nature was as deep as the roots of the towering oaks that graced his backyard. He often ventured into the nearby woods, finding solace in the ancient trees and the chorus of birdsong that filled the air. But beneath this tranquil facade lurked a shadow, a darkness that gnawed at Christopher's soul. His heart weighed heavy with unspoken burdens, his mind a labyrinth of fears and doubts. Despite the warmth of the Carolina sun, a coldness crept into his bones, a chill that refused to dissipate. It was on one such morning, the air thick with the promise of rain, that Christopher's world was turned upside down. As he sipped his coffee, lost in thought, a realization dawned upon him. A realization that would set into motion a series of events that would forever alter the course of his life. Christopher's mind drifted to the handgun tucked away in his bedside drawer, a relic of a past he had long tried to bury. The weight of it, both literal and metaphorical, bore down on him, a constant reminder of his inner turmoil. That day, as the rain began to fall, Christopher made a decision, one that would lead him down a path shrouded in uncertainty. He packed a bag, leaving behind a note for his family, a cryptic message that offered no explanation for his sudden departure. With the quiet resolve of a man burdened by secrets, Christopher set out into the storm, his destination unknown even to himself. The roads blurred past, the rain obscuring his vision, mirroring the tumult within his heart. Days turned into nights, and nights into weeks. As Christopher wandered aimlessly, his mind a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. He sought solace in the wild places, 
the beauty of the world around him was a balm for his troubled soul. It was in the midst of this journey, amidst the towering peaks of the Great Smoky Mountains, that Christopher's path crossed with destiny. His car, a silent witness to his inner turmoil, sat abandoned in the newfound Gap parking area, a beacon drawing him deeper into the wilderness. As park rangers combed the rugged terrain, their searchlights cutting through the darkness like swords, Christopher's fate hung in the balance. The Appalachian Trail, a lifeline stretching through the heart of the wilderness, became both his sanctuary and his prison. The days stretched into weeks, each moment pregnant with the weight of the unknown. Rangers scoured the trails, their footsteps echoing in the silence, each leaf rustling beneath their feet like a whisper of hope. And so, as the sun set over the great smoky mountains, casting long shadows over the rugged terrain, the search for Christopher Lee Cessna continued. However, he was still missing up to this day. 